My dear Chevalier, since you've become a ladies' man, it has become impossible to find you. I can do nothing but applaud. But perhaps this evening you may be tempted to change direction. Your young mistress tells me that for the last two days all obstacles have been overcome, and that your happiness depends only on yourself. But you did not even call. And to tell you everything, she seems a little bit annoyed by this lack of eagerness on your part. She made me promise to give you the letter I enclose. I would wager that it is concerned with a rendezvous for this evening. And now, what are you going to do? If I were speaking to the Dancini of three months ago, even to the Dancini of a week ago, I should be certain of his heart and what he would do. But will the Dancini of today prefer a very timid girl who has nothing on her side but beauty, innocence, and her love to the charms of a perfectly accustomed woman? If I were you, I would choose the former. But... I will approve whatever you do. Goodbye, my friend. My dear friend, I, I must just add that I am in despair at being separated from Madame de Torville. I would pay with one half of my life for the happiness of devoting the other half to her. Ah, believe me, we are only happy through love. How does it happen, my dear? <clears throat> How does it happen, my dear, that I no longer see you? Do you not want it any more as much as I? Ah, now I'm sadder than when we were quite separated, for the grief I endured through others now comes to me from you. For some days, Mama's been out, as you know, and I had hoped you would try to profit from this, but you do not even think of me. You told me so often that I did not love as much as you. I knew to the contrary, and this is the proof. Since Mama has been away all day, she's been going to bed at 11 o'clock every evening. The porter says that when you want to come in, you must tap on his window, and he will let you in at once. You will easily find the stairway, and I will leave my bedroom door ajar to give you a little light. You must be very careful not to make a noise, especially in passing the door of Mama's room. Now we will see whether you really love me. Heaven, why does my heart beat so fast? Will some misfortune fall on me? Or is it the hope of seeing you which so upsets me? What I do feel is that I never loved you so much. I never desired so much to tell you so. Come, let me tell you a hundred times that I love you. That I adore you. That I shall never love anyone but you. I found a way to let Monsieur de Vermont know I had something to tell you. So, I expect you tomorrow evening, unless you want your Cecile to be very miserable. Goodbye, my dear. I kiss you with all of my heart. <laughs> Do not doubt either my heart or my actions, my dear Vicomte. Uh, how could I resist a desire of my Cecile's? Uh, is she, she only whom I love, whom I shall love forever? Often the memory of Cecile has troubled me in the moment of most delightful pleasures. So Perhaps my heart never paid her truer tribute than at that very moment when I was unfaithful to her. But let us hide my errors from her, to save her from distress. No, Cecile's happiness is my most ardent desire. I shall go tomorrow and confess to the lady who has caused and shared my error, and I shall say to her, Read what is in my heart. We both have been deceived 
Uh, alas, friendship united with desire is so like love. I know my friend, and she will approve of what I do. Thank you, my dear Vicomte. There has been no change, my dear friend, in the unfortunate state of our beloved patient, but something has occurred which I certainly did not expect. I received a letter from Monsieur de Valmont, who has decided to make me his confidant and who enclosed a letter for Madame de Torvel. I sent back the one when I replied to the other. I send you his letter and I think you will agree that I could not and ought not to do what he asks me. To persuade her to accept his letter by assuring her of his repentance, his regrets, his love, even if I wanted to do it. Our unfortunate friend is not in a state of mind to understand me, and the atonement he professes will not cure her or give her back her life. What do you say to this despair of Monsieur de Valmont? Is one to believe in it? Or is he simply trying to deceive everyone until the end? If he is sincere this time, he may well tell himself that he has made his own unhappiness. Goodbye, my dear friend. I must return to my sad caregiving, which becomes even more sad from the little hope I have that it will make a difference. <laughs>